Sankara Pali, Sanskrit samskara, is a term figuring prominently in Buddhism. The word means that which has been put together and that which puts together. In the first passive sense, sankara refers to conditioned phenomena generally but specifically to all mental dispositions. These are called volitional formations both because they are formed as a result of volition and because they are causes for the arising of future volitional actions. English translations for sankara in the first sense of the word include conditioned things, determinations, fabrications, and formations, or, particularly when referring to mental processes, volitional formations. In the second active sense of the word, sankara refers to karma sankara that leads to conditioned arising, dependent origination. Topic: Etymology and meaning. Sankara is a Pali word that is based on the Sanskrit word samskara. The latter word is not a Vedic Sanskrit term, but found extensively in classical and epic era Sanskrit in all Indian philosophies. Samskara is found in the Hindu Upanishads such as in verse 2.6 of Kashataki Upanishad, 4.16.224 of Chandogya Upanishad, 6.3.1 of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad as well as mentioned by the ancient Indian scholar Panini and many others. Sankara appears in the Buddhist Pitaka texts with a variety of meanings and contexts, somewhat different than the Upanishadic texts, particularly for anything to predicate impermanence. It is a complex concept, with no single word English translation, that fuses object and subject as interdependent parts of each human's consciousness and epistemological process. It connotes impression, disposition, conditioning, forming, perfecting in one's mind, influencing one's sensory and conceptual faculty", as well as any «preparation, sacrament» that «impresses, disposes, influences or conditions» how one thinks, conceives or feels. Topic: Conditioned things. In the first passive sense, sankara refers to conditioned things or dispositions, mental imprint. All aggregates in the world, physical or mental concomitants, and all phenomena, state early Buddhist texts, are conditioned things. It can refer to any compound form in the universe whether a tree, a cloud, a human being, a thought or a molecule. All these are sankaras, as well as everything that is physical and visible in the phenomenal world are conditioned things, or aggregate of mental conditions. The Buddha taught that all sankaras are impermanent and essenseless. These subjective dispositions, states David Kalupahana, "...prevented the Buddha from attempting to formulate an ultimately objective view of the world." Since conditioned things and dispositions are perceptions and do not have real essence, they are not reliable sources of pleasure and they are impermanent. Understanding the significance of this reality is wisdom. This conditioned things sense of the word sankara appears in four noble truths and in buddhist theory of dependent origination that is how ignorance or misconceptions about impermanence and non-self leads to tana and rebirths the samyutta nikaya 2.12.1 presents one such explanation as do other pali texts the last words of the buddha according to the mahaparinibbana sutta in english and pali were disciples this i declare to you all conditioned things are subject to disintegration strive on untiringly for your liberation 
Pali, Handadani Bikave Amantayami Vo, Vayadama Sankara Apamadina Sampadatha T. Topic Sankara Khanda in the second active sense, Sankara or Sankara Khanda refers to the form creating faculty of mind. It is part of the doctrine of conditioned arising or dependent origination. In this sense, the term Sankara is karmically active volition or intention, which generates rebirth and influences the realm of rebirth. Sankara herein is synonymous with karma, and includes actions of the body, speech, and mind. The Sankara Khanda states that living beings are reborn, bhava, become by means of actions of body and speech. Kama. The Buddha stated that all volitional constructs are conditioned by ignorance avia of impermanence and non self. It is this ignorance that leads to the origination of the sankharas and ultimately causes human suffering dukkha. The cessation of all such sankharas -sankara is synonymous with awakening bodhi, the attainment of nirvana. The end of conditioned arising or dependent origination in the karmic sense sankaras, yields the unconditioned phenomenon of nirvana, as the ignorance conditions the volitional formations, these formations condition, in turn, the consciousness vijnana. The Buddha elaborated, what one intends, what one arranges, and what one obsesses about, this is a support for the stationing of consciousness. There being a support, there is a landing or, an establishing of consciousness. When that consciousness lands and grows, there is the production of renewed becoming in the future. When there is the production of renewed becoming in the future, there is future birth, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair. Such is the origination of this entire mass of suffering and stress. Topic: <inaudible> Mental factors. Mental factors (Sanskrit: kaitasika, Pali: setasika, Tibetan: wili, Sims: byong) are formations (Sanskrit: sankara) concurrent with mind (Sanskrit: sata). They can be described as aspects of the mind that apprehend the quality of an object, and that have the ability to color the mind. Nibbana The Buddha emphasized the need to purify dispositions rather than eliminate them completely. Kalupahana states that the elimination of dispositions is epistemological suicide, as dispositions determine our perspectives. The development of one's personality in the direction of perfection or imperfection rests with one's dispositions. When preliminary nibbana with substrate occurs, that is, nibbana of a living being, constructive consciousness, that is, the house builder, is completely destroyed and no new formations will be constructed. However, sankharas in the sense of constructed consciousness, which exists as a karmically resultant consciousness continue to exist. Each liberated individual produces no new karma, but preserves a particular individual personality which is the result of the traces of his or her karmic heritage. The very fact that there is a psycho-physical substrate during the remainder of an arahant's lifetime shows the continuing effect of karma. <laughs> English translations for the term Sankara Activities Ajahn Susito. Concoctions Santicaro. Conditions Conditioning factors Conditioned things Determinations Fabrications Formations 
Karmic formations Mental constructions Preparations Bhikkhu Katakarunde Nyanananda Volitional activities Gethin, p. 136 Volitional formations Bhikkhu Bodhi Topic See also Kleshas Buddhism Mental factors Buddhism Patika Samapada Samskara Indian underscore philosophy Hindu concept Skanda <laughs>